Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to Equestria War. I'm your host, Mr. McAuliver. And right now, as you can see, well, this is not where we left off yesterday, but we are 100% of the way there to capitulate the Griffonian Empire. They have lost 2.5 million soldiers to us alone, while we've suffered a total of 165,000 enemies against the Reich's Pact. Overall, not too bad. It is, of course, December 8th, 1014, and one of the comments from yesterday did include, or ask me, if I was going to play as a Griffonian Republic sometime. And to answer that question, I guess, you know what? Maybe we will sometime. I'm not sure when, but maybe sometime we will, because I do plan on playing at least one time with the Kingdom of Winged Body, but we'll see. But, uh, the people did help me out here. I don't know. I think I'll just take everything. Just just because we can. And there we go. Very nice. Also, you might hear the mouse. You might not hear the mouse. But I do have a different mouse for the rest of this campaign, just because I'm trying out a different mouse, because the other one, well, it broke. Go figure. Regardless, what we're going to do these military factories for now. Mechanized equipment is not bad. Maybe get some more planes. Planes are pretty pretty important, I'd say. So, let's do that and plop them on, plop them on, if we have enough, of course. But now, with our defeat... Oh, we can pillage vault banks? Uh, everyone knows the vaults of Fluina are full of valuables. Now that we've seized the city and subjugated its populace, uh, nothing stops us from borrowing some cash or all of it permanently. Send military advisors. Ooh. Oh, people have to have a better opinion of us in which we can help them out, but we lose command power for a while. Stanley Good and Polar Bear Community send a white piece. And we should help and give actual other nations more abilities to uh, improve themselves while they're at war. Which we could do. We could whip the party as well. Let's go and do that one. And then, 275, curtail people. You know what? Why not? We might need a lot of support here. Proclaim the Empire's defeat, though. <clears throat> a new political focus branch will be unloaded, which is very cool. North Grifoni will be released as a puppet. And right now, we are currently doing up the Wolfpack Theorem, which gives us about another week to do it, which is okay with us. But I guess at this point, let's go ahead and proclaim the Empire's defeat. It's going to make the game lag a little bit, but not too bad. <clears throat> and we have here the Hatzland Republic, as well as the Aquilian Republic up in the north. Very nice. Led by Olivia Stern, the communist, very communist. It looks like a, looks like a generic focus tree. Oh, oh, no, don't, 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 don't tell me. It did this. Uh, that's maybe one thing I would say. Um... Maybe the devs are watching. Um, if we load up, like, the new focus tree, maybe just make sure that we don't lose progress on the other focus. Because we had 43 days into the focus. I should have waited. But at least we get to show everyone here that if you do that on your own terms, you know, if you click on that button, you will lose progress of any focus you're currently doing. Which is a big no-no in my book, but maybe if the devs are watching, they'll fix that in the future. Maybe. The third step. The time has come now. The Republic stands triumphant over its greatest ideological enemy, and the Pat has brought it there. The support from the people of our regime have never been higher, and we are ready to take the final measure to ensure the workers' liberation. All that is left is to take the leap, my friends. Take the giant leap and a united North Griffonian state? Yes. North Griffonian Republic, led by Solvej Bjarik. Open the political sphere, and let's hope that they do become kind of communist. Also, but... Gentle creatures, we have come to the final issue at Hoof. General Crew rubbed his eyes. It had been a long meeting, and he would not mind wrapping up soon, yet the current issue was probably one of the most vital. Our forces have captured the child in question, and he is awaiting our decision on what to do with him. There can be no doubt as to what we should do, surely, Allard asked. Raising an eyebrow, we have caught the foundation of the Hatzlander's imperialist ambitions. What else are we supposed to do but deal with this issue permanently? Not everyone treats execution of a child so casually, Taibalt remarked dryly. The key issue is preventing a resurgence of imperial sentiments. Not the child per se. A poor child murdered by the brutish reds won't earn us anything but enmity, he pointed out. Are you suggesting that we should leave him to be instead? Allard's voice was airy as he leaned back into his seat. I didn't know you were so conciliatory towards the reactionaries. Perhaps we should see if a constitutional monarchy might work? Please stop that, Allard, Grand Crew sighed. You are right, Allard. Something must be done. You are also correct, Taibalt. It would cause international uproar. I do wish to propose an alternative. Banishment. We will expel him to some distant land and let him live out the rest of his life there anonymity. We extract a promise from those we entrust with him to not let him out of sight, but at the same time we do not solely our hooves with his blood. And what do we do when the reactionaries track him down and bring him back to prop him up as a symbol against us? Allard inquired. If there's no other alternative, then we'll do what we must, Grand Crew stated heavily, but until then we offer him clemency. If he vanishes, that works for us. Man, five minutes in, we're already talking about executing children. Nice. Very nice. But, regardless. 272 is pretty good. We get all or nothing armor skin because I love armor. I love thick, heavy armor. Mmm. Signing me up. But 1014, 15, very nice. And 1014, and we're going to 1015. Very good, very good. How about some nukes? Nothing says Equestria likes some nukes. The third step. 
Swiftly came unbidden, like a silent hunter, but in the years to come, many would see how the signs pointed to this moment. In the late afternoon, and without warning, the socialist paramilitary struck, raiding the party HQ of the MPA and of the PDNA, and arresting several party officials in the evening. President Grand Crew went on the radio to declare a state of emergency, citing the infiltration of anti-revolutionary elements into the ripest opposition, and assuring the citizens of Aquilia that the state was enacting temporary security measures for their safety. One of the measures was the sus suspension of the National Assembly, which was supposedly under particular threat, but not to worry, the executive would continue to make the necessary policies in its stead. The first order, of course, was the dissolution of the MPA and the PDNA, who were deemed too compromised by enemies of the people. Oh man, you gotta love this takeover. Those outside of the PAT saw for what it was, a naked grab for power and a clear uh, precursor to autocracy. Within hours of the announcement, protests erupted on the streets. The largest protest in Aquila was led by Theodore Verani himself, who stood before the crowd, denouncing Grand Crew as a tyrant and a traitor to the Republic. His long speech on the evils of communism was interrupted by police and red militia who dispersed the crowd by driving the right vehicles into it. Marachal Rodier was more circumspect, making his own radio announcement insulting Grand Crew. He was a theory addled pillock, among other colorful phrases, and vowing resistance before disappearing from public view. Whispers quickly arose of dissension and addition within the ranks of the armed forces, prompting the ex execute executive to shuffle problematic members to less important posts. Meanwhile, Cecile Gaudreau, whose FJA was the only other remaining legal party, made a statement of protest, widely published by sympathetic press, but she quickly found herself disempowered when much of the FJA's left joined the socialists instead. As the dust settled, the ruling socialists found the Aquilian state in great disarray. Aquilians across the country had endured the shock of betrayal by their seemingly mild-mannered president, and the police thoroughly reduced by the purges, social life died down as a pall of fear descended upon the nation. The revolution is has come to Aquilia once more. Oh, boy. Water's very good, and we change our flag, and the bloody communists have taken over. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. <sighs> Gotta love it. Cool. Hetzland Republic. Anti-reactionary action. Rapid headlandisha. Remilitarization. Hetzlandisha reconstruction. For the Hetzland to become a faithful ally in the social struggle, its workers require their own means of production. Minister Murat has come up with a plan to intertwine the economics or economies of our two sister republics to assist in supporting economic recovery. There. Oh, Grand Crew. <sighs> Taking out the reactionaries with very, very appropriately. Oh, man. And now, I guess it makes more sense for us to pillage the banks right now, actually, but I think we can kind of wait. Uh, actually, oh, I did want to build up a lot more factories, didn't I? Wow. I really wanted to build up a lot more. Oh, baby. Uh, let's build up more civvies. I love the civvies. And even in, in our allies, too. Why not? But after this one, we will probably go and do the People's Assembly. With the third step completed and the Hatsland on its way to support its sister republic, we can now finally consider our own politics. Crew intends to step aside and let a new generation take up the torch of revolution, a concept the old guard of the first struggle could never understand, so we are left with two options. A syndicalist, Taibot Devereaux, and a surprise candidate, the vanguardist, Victor Allard. Oh boy. Orthodox primacy. Oh boy, and neo allardism No us show support is very good. And we have uh, the River, Feder River Federation. 1015, happy 1015, everyone. We're finishing that stuff up there, but let's keep working on getting some heavy, heavier ships. Uh, since we already this far down with making subs, we might as well keep going that way. And we've, we have a total of four task forces, which is not bad. We can do that. There you go. We could probably use some more army XP. Up next, since we're doing ship designing, carrier, uh, I love this, this Mistral would be very, very good, Chief of the Navy, we can wait and do that one, and then, the People's Assembly. Oh, we can't do that one, we need all of these falling, god dang it. Rapid headlandisha, remilitarization. The extension of the liberation to the rest of Griffonia requires more loyal soldiers than this. We will request the mobilization of all dedicated soldiers within the Hatsland to serve its, in, its, in its new army. We will provide funding to their training camps and their academies, and in exchange, the Hatsland will support us when we bring the light of socialism to the continent. Very good. Oh, we can send military advisors. Cool. And where is that? Ah, they're fighting up there. You know what? Let's go and send them out. Why not? Oh, for a, that's for a long time, isn't it? That is quite for a long time. Send volunteers. Six divisions. That is quite nice, I would say. Quite nice. And it gives us it gives our guys some time to get more experience. Maybe get to general to get more experience. Well, Eagle Hot? Yes, please. Mama Eagle Hot. Or Daddy Eagle Hot. I can't tell. Doesn't really matter though. <clears throat> and, but they have no plans, so we can't even send them anything, so that's, which is fine, whatever. We can only get 1.51 political power every single day, and we'll do Hetzland Disha anti reaction reaction. Well, while the surface level revolutions were taking over land, taking over the Hetzland, its society is still reactionary and monarchist at its core. Therefore, we must do everything we can to remove this taint from the Hetzland uh, identity through a fiery revolutionary campaign against the leftover tyrants and their sympathizers. Ooh, heavy ships, nice. 
Even heavier ships. I love it. Alright, so where are we at, my friends? Oh, did I click on as an M or something? Something like that. I can't remember. If you guys are just beating these people up, you should be able to move in pretty quickly, right? Honestly, Eagle Heart reminds me of that one was a Russian woman that's in the military that people like, kind of meme over and start. So, I can't remember what her name was, but she reminds me of that. And M. Ah. There we go. It's a little better, maybe. I don't know. Um, well, I don't feel comfortable there. Just doing the entire front line. You all don't have to go on the same tile, guys, but whatever. Alright, let's go to that one next, too. Promises of peace. It's kind of nice not having to deal with the uh, Senate. Or Congress. <laughs> it feels kind of weird, though, not having it, but whatever. So after that, then we'll probably do the sim People's Assembly. Workers of the World Awaken. Call to Action. Oh, I like this one, too. Uh, a Brotherhood of Creatures. Captain on Desk. Strike down the Republic. Um, well, we'll see what happens when we can do whatever next. Because all this is done, which is fine. And we still have stuff up top, so I guess we'll wait and see what happens, really. How are we doing? Um, just got, ooh, more divisions, nice. Ooh, three more light tank divisions. Actually, I tried them, and off screen, they, they really weren't that great. <laughs> they really weren't that great, I'll be honest. So, you guys go and train as well. I'm not sure where we have to go to war with anybody, but probably, honestly, getting a winged body is probably looking a bit too strong for our liking. Arcturian order was annexed. Okay, goodbye then. Improved death charge. Nice. Better destroyers. Very, very good. Let's break down the Republic. Cool. There we go. Awesome, awesome. So cast off Aconites. Lessons for the Northern Expedition. Oh, we could probably use that immediately. Uh, is there any point to do this though? Uh, naval XP gain, air XP gain. That's eh, okay. The Nuclear Committee cast out the Aconites. The Aconites are relics of the past long gone. What's worse, they are constantly trying to interfere in politics around Griffonia. <clears throat> the Archon of Boreas tried to become the regent for Grover VI, and the Archon of Ire tried to coup his way to power in Romau. Few more reasons are needed to cast them off for good. Nice. Wasaka? Is that not enough? Oh, I guess not. Mama Eagleheart. Eh, go for it, just Buster. You never know, we really... Oh! Good job, guys. Good job. Political actions. Uh, yeah, that wouldn't be too bad. We could kind of wait for that, maybe. Uh, military training is pretty much done as well for now, so... <clears throat> and how is it? Oh, ah, they returned. Very good. Jolly good. Get some more military factories as well, because we could probably honestly use them, so... Go three at a time. Keep building up the civvies, because I'm sure we ran out of stuff here. But faith. Oh yeah, we definitely need more millies. Religion, religion is one of the most powerful tools in the hands of any griffin. Widespread and followed by millions of creatures, in many ways it is a staple within our culture itself, with some having honored the gods as instinctual as breathing or drinking. Attempting to remove an institution as concrete as its three temples would only end in disaster, yet it is clear that there is much easier problem than needs addressing the Archons. These spiritual leaders are nothing more than priests with lofty titles who still hold almost complete power over the lives of the religious. The Archons have already proven themselves unworthy or untrustworthy, with both Eros and Arion having attempted to take power in the hearts of them before. <laughs> It's just something. We can and will no longer tolerate. Instead, we will create a new path, one still honoring the gods of Boreas, Iron, and Arcturus, but allowing the people to choose their own way, as it should be. A charlatan in a fancy hat has no right to rule. Very nice. Conquest by Rice by Philip Redglad. Uh, I think I've already read this before. Uh, but uh, a book written by Philip Redglad tells us a story about the struggle of the Griffins of Prywin, as well as a new economic formation he has planned to institute in Prywin. He critiques feudal societies most of the Griffin nations possess. He proclaims the right for every creature for well-being less working hours, and that the main aim of a social state is technological innovation, which shall lead to automation, freeing the population from hard labor. The Communist Party in our country obtained a copy of the book, is now being published for it, published it for everyone to read. Way to go. Nice. And let's go and do people of the, People's Assembly. <clears throat> very, very good. Go to where you think you must. That's a lot of peepee. -pee. That's a lot of peepee, -pee, not gonna lie. But we like the lots of peepee. -pee. Pillage bank vaults? Screw it. We'll do it anyways, because we can. And... <clears throat> Naval Aviation. I, we're not really using carriers too much. Subs would be great. Let's do capital ship stuff. I love it. And are we done with land auction? Almost. And we will be done now with land auction. And we get some really nice heavy ships. We're going to have to wait because we need to make some... Oh! Oh! We don't even have a good turrets on them. Oh, it hurts. Oh, that's so not good. Nice. And once this army is completely filled up, then we'll make another army over here too. But, you know what? Since we're here, we need to improve our... 
Factory's here. Very good. I guess we can fully annex these guys too, so. Not bad. Not too shabby, my friends. That people's assembly. Oh boy. Nice. Um, well, I guess we have to read this. As planned, the Congress of the Parte des Aquilian Travailleurs convened in the Palais de Gloire. Once the residents of the discrets, the whole complex was under lockdown with the Republican guards griffins and socialist auxiliaries providing the garrison silent sentinels against the reactionaries still teeming in the alleyways and side streets yet unlit by the light of socialist thought. To the outside rule, there was only one bastion of steel and stone, a once decrepit symbol of the old regime purified into a bulwark of true people's government. Inside the palace, there was energy and force. Hundreds of delegates from all across Aquilia had gathered, and in the spirit of camaraderie, they spoke with a fiery spirit about the great affairs of the state. They discussed most fiercely the great, greatest matter approaching them, the impending departure of President Grand Crew and his possible replacement. The big fellow himself brought the assembly toward his end, summoning the delegates to the main hall to begin the proceedings in his opening speech, and indeed his speech of farewell. He encouraged his comrades to keep the spirit of revolution alive and to let the writings of the socialist canon be their lodestar in a wonderful, wonderful future of freedom and equality. There were two candidates whose names had been uh, uh, bandied out. Thibault Devereaux was known to be Crew's closest associate, or even his protege, a staunch defender of orthodoxy and of the power of the workers' councils. His election would signal continuity and development, a gradual but an inexorable state of change into a true proletarian republic. Another, on the other club, there was Victor Allard, a young, brash, and obdurate rabble-rouser. Allard was a true radical proponent of a strong state that would guide the revolution on behalf of the masses. Representatives, empowered by the people, would speak for the nation, a doctrine he termed democratic vanguardism. Already he had attracted his fair share of detractors, though others carefully suggesting that his deviation from tradition was necessary in the face of imperial threats across the world. Ultimately, the choice would be Grand Cruz. Devereaux, a trade union organizer, or Allard, an ardent vanguardist. You get more political power that way. Ooh, I don't know. I didn't know we had get another choice here. A social state? Syndical, syndicate government representation. Assemblée decentralization. And this one is either one, so... So we have... Register National de la Milice, Milice? And this one requires all both of these. Huh. And you don't get that one, that one. So, voluntary education. Okay, so then, a Brotherhood of Creatures stepping down. Or Neo Allardism. Democratic Vanguardism. Even more daily communist support. Awaken O Proletariat of Aquilia. Even more communist support. Bureau de Coordination Syndicale. Which is interesting. Minus 12% political parking, huh? Bureau des Arms a few at des Explosifs. Oh. Political recentralization, civic nationalism, huh? And then captain on the desk, captain of the ship. Uh, I don't know which one I really want to do, but we want to go with Grand Crew, so I'm going to go with his protege, probably Orthodox Primacy. Devereaux shall continue the revolution. Cool. If you like it about him, or the revolution's transition is finished, and Tibalt is now at the helm, the social state. The goal of the state should be the protection of the citizens and of the revolution. There are its two cardinal goals, and the government should push all others to decide to focus upon these objectives. In this spirit, we must expand the safety net to the population. This will allow our citizens to live more prosperous lives and not rely upon large families to support farming and factory work. Oh, look at him. Devereaux was... Wow. That's kind of cool. That's actually pretty cool. Alright, if we're making more divisions, just head on over there. Even though we are starting right out of manpower, which is not a good idea, but eh, we get, cut that down, cut that down. That'd be very nice. Basic heavy batteries, we get some even better, improved heavy batteries. Uh, what do we have over here? Anything else? Military advisors? Ooh, I guess we can close that one out for now. It's fine. Actually, press censorship. We could do that. More common support? Might as well, right? <clears throat> and of course, with this one. Oh, we got nuclear reactors done. That's nice. And some shippy stuff done. Let's grab some of that, too. But also some of this as well. I don't want to lose any more political power. This because it's actually more political power. And more political power, too. Blueprint stealing. The guides of the new revolution shall be those who made it possible. The workers and laborers of the syndicates shall be, grant, shall be granted further political power by forming an advisory council to the New People's Assembly. Staffed by syndicate representatives. Always ready to give their input on national politics. Vassal of this? Oh, boy. Oh boy. In daily life, Hazelfeather looked at the collection of various cheeses behind the glass and pointed at a particularly wonderful looking arrangement of brie. It was wrapped in a loaf of sourdough bread and the only way you knew it was brie by the way by the fancy handwritten sign in front of it. Her basket for groceries today already had fresh grape bundles. Prosecuto slice so thin you could see through it like a sheer wedding veil. A dozen different kinds of apples from Granny Smith's to Macintosh Reds to Fuji's to Zebraica, and his bottle of pre revolution wine that was at least a decade old. 
A cheesemonger nodded happily and, and pulled the brie arrangement out to place upon the countertop. That'll be four idols, he said, and in response, she extended his claw and revealed the idols without hesitation. Just remember to heat it up uh, or heat it up until the scone around is golden brown for the perfect experience tonight. Hazel feathered through the cheesemonger for an uh, extra idol and happily wiggled her tail's feather that stuck out of her factory uniform. This is going to be a wonderful night. Truly, life in Aquilia is grand. Nice. Very, very nice. Awesome. We want to have the best best technologies followed up with assembly decentralization the next step of Tibalt's reforms regard the power of the regional departments of the republic the central assembly's authority shall be lessened and its powers evolved to regional bodies which with their own elected officials and syndicate councils this shall make the government more responsive to the citizens it serves very nice oh and we can go ahead and do press censorship because we love censorship here oh oh boy that is oh hold on Oh, the, uh, these guys fell apart. I thought that you were all allied at one point. What the heck? Oh, that is not good. Okay, so hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Um, there you go. One, two. You guys do that. You guys do that. Well, we might need to go to war with these guys very soon. We don't want to probably want to die, so... Oh, 160 days. Oh, that doesn't good. We actually have a really high opinion of them. Look at that. We're trade partners. That makes sense. But they still have 100,000 manpower. Not bad, not bad, not bad. But halls of the Union. I say that butterscotch is not actually a form of candy. Several griffins spoke up here with here, here. Well, a host, whole host of others pointing claws and snapped their beaks indignantly. I declare that if butterscotch is not a form of candy, then neither are bonbons. Some griff else retorted. The candy union then erupted in an all out brawl. Griffins threw fists and smashed objects into each other while squawking their opinions on chocolate, with one griffin even getting a broken beak for declaring that white chocolate was not true chocolate. All this came to a sudden halt when a gunshot rang up. Bang bang! Now, monsieurs and madames, the griffin who fired the pistol cleared his throat. This is a very important democratic process in which you are not allowed to punch your opponent. Let us try this again. Why is butterscotch not a form of candy? Squabbling is part of the democratic process. Assembly decentralization? Cool. I guess we're devolving power to the people. With Anti-Reactionary Action and Coordination Office. The reactionaries continue to resist us. We have shown them the light, the method by which Aquilia shall be delivered from tyrants and oligarchs, and they've turned away. But we still have our comrades behind us. The citizens know we are the ones who liberated the Hetzland, who spread the revolution to the far-flung corners of the continent, so we shall remove the deniers from our midst. Just, just remove them. Just casually remove them. Nothing bad will ever happen, which is a great thing. Because who will resist our rightful rule? That looks pretty good. Go and do that too. Very nice. Another task force. Very bueno, my friends. Very, very, very bueno. And there you go. We definitely need more air bases around here. Holy smokes. Hope you guys are having a pretty good day. I'm, I'm doing okay myself. You know, not perfect, but I could be a lot worse. And actually, since we're here, so we can go battery. Do that, and then do that. Cool. What else do we need? So we got that, that, that. Uh, how are the destroyers coming along? Eh, they need to be researched. Hmm. All right, heavy ships. Goodbye. Uh, goodbye. We have plenty enough naval XP to do this. Level four is muy bueno. Level four. Mmm, yummy. Level four. Oh yes, yeah, sign us up. Level three battleship, battle cruiser. We're using battle cruiser armor, huh? You no, know, let's keep with the tradition. Battle cruiser armor, it is then. Uh, go with heavy battery, that's fine. Do secondary battery there. If you're going to use that, you got to go all the way and get level 4 here too. Uh, attack. And piercing is not bad. Armor is not great, but if I did this, it would slow us down a little bit more. And I don't want to slow us down any more than we already have been. So... Get some more anti-air. That is not bad. That's a pretty good ship. I like that one a lot. If that's the case, you guys are done. One, two, three. Very good. We need more crystals too, though. What a shame. We can't send military advisors, which sucks. But Prywin? Oh boy. Well, yep. Well, I guess up next, anti reactionary office coordination office. Oh. 
devolution. President Tibbaugh has announced that today no longer will be the federal government of the regional governments directly interfere with and dictate local affairs. If really wishes to implement a tax on Fifth Izzy and Cheddar that only applies within the city limits, they may. If priority requires all sailors to salute civilians as they do the captains, they may elect to require this. In an assembly vote that did not have a majority yesterday morning, only passing when a midnight compromise was reached, individual villages, towns, and cities were granted total autonomy to decree local laws, so long as they did not directly conflict with federal law and had a minimum of three-fourths majority direct vote from the citizenry of the village, town, or city. Meanwhile, the assembly will still retain all control over the military as well as the interstate and inner city apparatuses. Hurrah for democracy! Alright, nice. And we'll go with cruisers, dreadnoughts, carriers, well, mm, smoke generators, hydrophones. That's not bad. I, let's get some hydrophones because we could use that for destroyers. Tibbot questions wing body sovereignty? Yes, he does. Actually, I should have sent them to divisions way earlier. Oh, they're, oh, they're dead. They're, they're literally just pretty much dead at this point. Oh, we do have the tanks. We can maybe send them over. Even though they're not really that good. They're 40 combo with, don't get me wrong, but... They're not that good. Angered? Yeah, you better be angered. Please don't lose. I'm sending you my tanks. I sent you my tanks. Please respond. <laughs> Registra Nacional de la Milis. Milis? All Aquilians are soldiers. All shall be exercised in the use of arms. This principle is clear, as is the danger posed by the forces of reaction, still brooding in dark places and plotting our downfall. We must prepare a list of able-bodied citizens who can, we can call upon to fight for the Republic. We must act quickly. We cannot afford to lose vigilance. Very good. Cruisers. Oh, I'll grab some of that one out. There we go. De Berger. Um, it looks like really just you got to defend here or something. Do your best, guys. Nice. Oh, supply is so bad here. Oh, that's not good. I should not set these guys in. Cruisers would not be bad. I'm going to grab some torpedoes too. That's fine with me. And let's get that one. Shock and all. We're done. Great. Well, I guess we didn't make it the other destroyer yet. That's fine. Oh, it's going to come along. So we're done with that, which is nice. Uh, how's artillery? It's a little bit ahead of time. Let's not do that yet. It's 10-15, of course. Uh, re well, recon, why not? Flexible line is very good. Grab the next one. No, we're going to wait and do this one. More than out attack. Thank you. Oh boy, I should not have sent these guys over. Great war's over, very cool. Um, that's okay. Oh, the King of Valenia became that, alright. Get some of that too. Our guys are not, these guys are just not very good. Oh, so declare war on the Kai coming, okay. Oh yeah, this is not good. I should not have sent these guys. Yeah, these tanks are not very good, so. Whenever I do this again, when I play as both the Supremacist and other routes, um, I'm probably going to use medium tanks instead, so. My bad. Neutralize MPA. Oh, okay. Yeah. Devolve government. Loot. PDNA resist. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah, we can get rid of that stuff. That's probably good. Neutralize them. That'd be good. Mm, I did give them logistics, so... Alright, so we didn't lose them, but okay. Carthinia, huh? The new Carthinian Empire. That looks a little intimidating, not gonna lie. Vigalini's doing a very good job, though. Oh, he's on service by requirement. Look at that. The Assembly. Very cool. Voluntary education. How wondrous the written word can be, teaching our citizens liberty and equality. Our efforts to promote education must go further, appealing to the hearts of our citizens with subtle words and crafted pedagogical gestures. Aquilians will learn that love of learning and love of the community are one and the same. Next, Sergeant H uh, Hawk Iron yelled out as he finished a draft work paper, registering the Griffiness in front of him. Despite not being called up for any regular military service, not every Griffin had to be registered and ready to, be, to fulfill their duty, defending their homes from bandits or invasion. It was only a matter of time before another war with the reactionaries would, of course, come. A short meek Griffin took forward name. Asked Hawk Iron, noticing the other Griffin's glasses and slight figure. He was certainly not fit for military service. Hawk Iron peered at his directive as a Griffin stuttered in an attempt at an answer, but not bothering to pay attention to his words. The directive read, Every able Griffin must be prepared to fight for a revolution. He gave it some thought and begrudgingly decided to give the Griffin some leeway. Do you consider yourself an able Griff? He inquired sternly, interrupting the other Griffins who were still trying to introduce himself. The meek Griffin seized upon 
seized up upon hearing the question. He couldn't speak and began to sweat profusely. He looked over, looked clearly bothered by the implication. Man, it reminds me of when I was in high school. Hawkeye nodded at him in a fraternal acknowledgement. Listen, there's no shame in admitting that you lack the ability to fight. I'm going to register you as a quartermaster assistant. There's no fighting, just mining supplies and preparing stock. Is that okay with you? The other griffin stood there for a moment, seeing a chance to get out of this mess. Then he turned and saw the gaze of the griffiness who had registered before him. Her disappointed face was so fierce. Her stare was so fierce that it would have been burned a hole into a lesser griffin. At once, he gave a sharp salute to the sergeant. I, I, I don't want any exceptions for, for myself. I'll do my duty, whatever may come, if it means I must die. Whether it be here or far from my land with a weapon in my hand, I shall make the stand, make, ask of me. I'm glad I stammered through that. We shall defend our homes. Cool. An avant-garde culture. Well, at least it came home. Statecraft cannot be our sole concern, as we have a responsibility to promote a quilling culture. In accordance with the liberality of socialist thought, we shall provide grants to import artistic projects. There shall be no boundaries, no taboos or censorship. The artists of Aquilia will have total freedom to express themselves, no matter how much bourgeois predatory should manifest. Oh, Regan Company is very nice. Very good, very good, very good. Yeah, I'm glad you guys are back, but you guys take a lot of supply and, and roads. Just not very good over there, man. Just not very good. Oh, man, we still need more millies. We're trying to build up some... Oh, send these guys to the top. Nice. Oh, cool. That's very good. Mm, there you go. Do this on that, too. There you go. Now oh, we can build a lot in these guys. It doesn't really matter too much, though, since... Yeah, it doesn't really matter. Uh, radar. Actually, that's, that could be pretty darn useful, actually. And we don't have crystals, but do one. Just do one. Cool. Better torpedoes. Thank you very much. Simon de Belgia. I wonder how this war would actually go between us. It doesn't look very good for us. And over here, probably never good. Voluntary education, though. After we get improved medium batteries, let's go that one. But oh, Chevals clopped, clopped his hooves happily. Not a care in the world tonight. I don't need to open a single book. He happily trotted down the street until he passed a bookshop. There in the window was the latest copy of the Griffonet with a headline of, For the masses, we must become better writers. He paused and looked at the art article headline. The rest of it was concealed and tucked away behind the fold to make sure the articles couldn't be read from the street. He pulled his heavy book-laden pack off his back and looked at the history book. I do like history, he mumbled to himself and reached out to pull it from his pack. Even if I don't have homework, a little light reading couldn't hurt. And just like that, the colt had suddenly made himself homework without being asked. Education is, of course, important. Avant-garde culture, very good. Followed up with a brotherhood of creatures. Our trade unions are strong. Our assemblies are vibrant. Our citizens are thriving thanks to the guiding claw of socialism. However, there remains one last obstacle to a truly equal proletariat, the might of the state itself. Now that we've achieved all that we can with the power of the executive, the next phase is upon us. We must make the executive itself obsolete. Oh boy. Obsolescence. Um, actually, let's do less damage. I want to do, I want to get less damage. I think that'd be good. Yeah, defending against these guys might not be super easy. Especially down here. These guys are going to get hit extremely hard. A question claims the Badlands. Well, good luck with that. Let's make these guys 40 combo with since we're here anyway, so. Boom, 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 boom. Good and good. Uh, engineers will be super important. Get some of uh, that as well. That'd be nice. We do have Mage Company, so you might as well, as well as Magical. Ooh. Ah, screw, for, no, screw the normal artillery. We have more than enough supplies for everybody, so good luck, everybody. We're going to need it. More divisions. Very good, very good. Um, You guys are over here. You guys will actually probably be able to hold. You guys down here probably won't. It was one thing to celebrate the nude form of Griffin, Pony Zero Yak. It was entirely another to give a display of oneself moments before luring another to bed and, furthermore, doing so in a mass of bodies that were required to stand perfectly still, like breathing, living, breathing mannequins. The actors were also all required to remain perfectly still for various pieces of artwork depicting them as strange creatures resembling angels from the time of Boreas himself. Hundreds of eyes, extra wings, extra other appendages that shouldn't be mentioned in polite company. One with a dozen heads made of different shades of griffin feathers drew particular attention and fascination. The art pieces arranged around the silent, motionless actors all displayed various images that were quite unbecoming, to say the least. Mothers covered the eyes of their children and quickly dragged them out of the new display in the Musée d'Arsay. One particularly irate griffin was squawking so loudly at the museum tour guide that one could not tell which was more indecent, the display or his language. And people call this rubbish art? Oh my god, it's very weird. A brotherhood of creatures, though. Stepping down. That's very, that's very quickly. Alright, this is probably a really, really just god-awful idea to go to war. Really, probably just bad. 
But, oh, we have a lot of bombers. That's really good. Even though they're not very good, actually, at all. 400 go right there. One, two, three, four. There you go. I think we do have anti air on our guys. I can't remember if we do or not, but whatever. Alright, you guys stop training. You guys go over there. That's very nice. Go and stop and go home. Three. That should be good enough, right? Oh, more divisions. Yes, please. Actually, we should probably deploy you guys a little bit closer to the line. And we'll actually go ahead and mobilize a little bit more. Oh. We'll go to all the serve, probably. Oh, that I did that already. There we go. Nice. Give him a few more seconds and we'll head on over. And hopefully have a good old time. It looks like some of you guys... Ooh. These guys need to, we need to improve these guys. You guys are 3... 40? Oh, no, no, no. 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40. That's better. That's better. All right. And here, let's go and do some more attacks. We like that. Three. Two. This is such a bad idea. One. Actually, you know what? Before we do that, I want to save just in case. You can see all my save games here. So. And sometimes it, it, it sometimes takes a while to get to the save screen for Hoi 4 now. Very weird, but whatever. Let's try it. They're not attacking us. Should I be concerned? Sure. So far, we're doing okay. Not great, but not bad. Eh, I guess so that one up. Oh. Okay, cool, why not? Stepping down. Tybalt's cane echoed off the stairs of the podium as he climbed to it. The quiet dead of the assembly filling the room. Even after the success of his initiatives, he knew that he was still regarded with suspicion as the successor of Grand Crew and the primary beneficiary of his third step. Whispers of an iron fist beneath his velvet glove or of hidden oligarchs beholden to him polluted the air, but he knew that what he had to say might make all that dissipate once and for all. Someone had placed a cigar upon the podium. He smiled. It was his favorite brand made in Fezera. Was it a gift from one of the delegates or a poison trap planted by a reactionary spy? He resolved to proceed with a speech, first of all. Perhaps he is, would be a assassin would have second thoughts once he had finished. My fellow Quillians, he began. There have been rumors concerning me that my programs have been a distraction for the consolidation of my power. I think that they have confused me for my competitor. Laughter erupted throughout the room, and Tebalt let it simmer down before it continued. Still, I understand these concerns because I have not been forthcoming about my plans, let me tell you this. Then, I plan to strengthen this assembly to grant it plenipotentiary power. I plan, you see, to dissolve the executive branch of this government. A hushed silence followed as Tibalt brought his speech to his climax. No more, no longer will Aquilia labor under the rule of a strong creature. The state will now and forever be a servant of the people, for the people, and by the people. And the applause was deafening. and rousing cheers, Tibalt descended the podium for the last time as president. The work began at once with staff being moved, political officers redirecting their reports to the assembly, and the TUCO creating new committees to oversee the affairs of state. As Tibalt sat in his office, thinking of his imminent return to private citizenry, he lit a cigar and placed it in his mouth, letting the sweet smoke fill his nostrils. He looked out of his window towards the sky, towards the street of Aquila, towards the magnificent future that lay ahead. Glory to the proletariat of Aquila. Voice of the people, wow, look at that. Political power, stability, po party popular stability modifier, and a lot of cheaper costs. Well, that person was not here for very long at all, wow. And that's all for that side. Uh, Pants Socialist Research Committee. Social science, propelled by the fraternity between honest inquirers of the truth, has stunned the world with its rapid ascendance. We must ensure that the revolution of the academy continues to grow and evolve, and to do so we must ensure that researchers can collaborate easily with their brethren, and vice versa. Let the workers' scholars of the world unite. Nice. Uh, we're taking quite a few casualties, but they're taking quite a few as well, which is actually very good to see. I mean, obviously it's not very perfect for us, but not too bad. Could be worse. Neutralize the PDNA. That is very good to do. Military advisors, we can't really afford that right now. Uh, I'll close it out of that. That's fine. Okay, not too much here. Oh, let's go and mobilize some more. We definitely have to do that. All built serve. So be it. Ooh. Oh. That was a one for one, huh? All right. Advanced ship torpedoes. Um, Let's go ahead and do other stuff that will immediately give us benefit in the field. What's going on here? Ooh, look at this. Oh, a little task force has been sunk. I love sinking enemy task forces. Oh, we're getting attacked here. Look at that. I didn't even realize we were getting attacked here. Firefighting drills, very good. Grab some of that as well. Losses. 32,000 versus a third of a million. Not bad, not bad. Look at that. They're just racking up their casualties. Jesus Christ. I love it. Oh, they're, oh, they're mobilizing. Oh, they're on all adults there too. Makes sense. One more heart attack piercing. That'd be very good. 
Keep going, Victor Morio. Moro. Seaman Guibert. Very good, very good, very good. I didn't even know they were attacking us. Oh, actually, since you guys are there, you guys might want to come over here, actually, instead, and then head on over to here. Makes our line look a little weaker, so they might be more enticed to attack us. Attack, 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 attack. Yeah, this, I love what the dead's dead with this mod. Like, they make it run so fast. Hands out, hands applaud for the devs. Look at that. 50,000 people left, and they're on scraping the barrel. You guys are on all adult serve, and you still have no manpower. Pan Socialist, Socialist, Pan Socialist Research Committee. Lessons from the Northern Expedition. We stand victorious over Cloudberry's oligarchs, just as we did for the Heart of Sun. We're working to prop up a true Workers' Republic there, helping it recover. Our armed forces are likewise recovering, and as part of this, they are studying the most recent action, hoping to further develop our understanding of warfare and military science. With a little nudge, we can accelerate this process. Which would be a great, grand thing. Go ahead and go in, guys, as fine with us. Oh my gosh, look how weak they are down here. That is impressive. That is impressive That how, how weak they are at right now. I am quite impressed. Okay, so they should really be out of... Oh, Rumair's gone. Good, good, good. That'll help us in the field immediately. They're out of manpower, so we start assaulting them everywhere. Well, they can't really do too much against us, especially when we have 87,000. Oh, that's not very much now, is it? If that's the case, let's cut down on, on our division making right now, then. Nice. Armor pierce cap shells. Cool. Medium pierce cap shells. Oh, and we have another one, too. I didn't realize that. Super heavies. Nice. Do we have any upgrades for these guys yet? Nope. That is fine with me. It looks like we might actually do, do relatively okay over here. Bracket shooting is not bad. You can even do some of that stuff, too. Why not? Um, What am I thinking? Oh. Spies. That's what I was thinking. Research and find out what they're up to. And give it five seconds. Maybe we'll start attacking. Five. Oh, four. I lied. Let's go. You might not be able to win immediately here. <clears throat> but this side, the wing body will fall. Oh. Oh, that sucks. Oh, it's not going combo. That's nice. We've lost 100, 150,000 versus... Wow. A lot. Lessons from the Northern Expedition. Navarre's deliberation. Soldiers liberating Gr Griffenheim were all well and good, but few, if any, are able to swim or fly across the oceans. They need ships to be transported on their to their destination, and they don't appear by magic, but only through hard work and steel. Of course, doing this part is going to be very, very difficult, but that's alright. Go on in as well, everyone. Let the light tanks do their duty, and if they die, they die. They should start losing some a serious amount of divisions now. Hopefully, 1016. Better engineers, thank you. I'm glad we're mobilizing, because we're losing a lot of guys as well, but not nearly as much as they have. Infantry anti-tank is good. Get some more soft attack. 10% more is very, very good. They've got to be completely out of manpower still, right? Like, there's a lot, there's a lot of attacks. They're almost out of complete, completely out of manpower. Yeah, they're completely out, pretty much. Stockpile-wise, they have a lot of equipment. A lot of equipment. No anti-tank, which is, you know, good for them, because we're not releasing tanks, but that's alright. Even more attack while in the oceans. Chance to receive critical hits goes down even further. Toulouse is gone. Very good. Very, very good. Oh, well, that's a combo. That's fine. Whatever. Oh, there goes those guys. Small caliber ammo. Uh, landing cap will be very good. As well. Oh, man. Some of these guys are going just nuts. So we've lost a quarter million versus... Roughly two and a half million, which is awesome. Not sure what else to say about that, but it's very awesome. Even more attack, yes, please. Tank stuff. Fortress Buster, thank you. Followed up with what? Workers of the world unite or awaken. Though we may have now secured our region for the people of Aquilia, there yet means remain strife and injustice throughout the world. Reactionaries elsewhere tremble in fear at a rise that conspire to destroy us. We must stand together with our fellow proletariat across the world, for only can we hope to withstand this coming onslaught. We will not be chained again. They've got to be giving up soon, right? New Carthinian Empire, 67% of the way there. They've lost half their army, I would say, maybe about. But it's only going to get worse now, so... At this point, get the navy. There you go. Push it down even further. 
I'll do there so that you can raid whatever they have. Oh boy. Oh yeah. Oh, find their little navy. The task force. Oh, the cap, part of the fleet. You sink it. Oh, we couldn't sink it. Oh, actually, that was. We lost a destroyer there, huh? Uh, we lost something? Huh? Not bad. Find their task forces and sink them. The fall of Carthen. Nice. So, 230. A quarter million from us perished. While. We killed off over 2.6 million of them. Not bad. Not too bad. You know, the Rumer Basin? Might as well. Griffistonian Confederation? Very, very nice. Led by Friedgund Kreisel? Cool. And then we also have uh, Unite Carthinia. That's what we're going to do with the resistance down here as well. And they're led by Giadona Bini. Bini! Oh no! And then we have reestablished the Evi Confederation, as well as Asterian. Led by Bogdan Zibob and the Republic. Very, very cool. And we have three more here, which we might save for the next episode, really. The Riverlands, Hill Ponies, pretty much over here, any, everyone to our west. East, 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 my bad. East. Northern Tribes? I guess technically we could go to war with them as well. It doesn't really matter to me too much. We'll probably go to war with them. We'll try to go to pretty much e war with everyone on this part of the continent. And finish up a lot of other things here. Cool. Evi Confederation. The Kaiv Commune. Can we invite you in? They kind of like us, but we can't really invite them, I guess. That kind of sucks. That'll take 185. We can wait for that, though. And the Workers of the World Unite. Pro Princess Lensat at the polls, but we'll probably end this campaign tomorrow after we finish our focus tree for the most part and take out some more people. But let's finish with the Armory of the Revolution. Aquilian industry and society have made great strides under the ages of socialism, but others have yet to see the light. Many of our soldiers yearn to battle reactionaries that hold back this light, and should we should not deny them from their desire for justice. We shall establish an office in the Defense Ministry dedicated to ensuring that many of our volunteers can render what they what assistance they can. But if you enjoyed this video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow when we will finish this campaign and take out the reactionaries. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.